Hello and welcome to this After Effects tutorial for marmoworld.com. My name is Matthias and today we are going to take a look at our tool Cineware Proxy. As you all know, the biggest new feature in the new version of After Effects called After Effects CC is the live 3D pipeline which tightly integrates After Effects with Cinema 4D. So what you can do with it is to import Cinema projects as layers in After Effects and render them directly and live inside of After Effects. And one problem with this pipeline is since you don't render any files, it essentially means you are all the time rendering in the background, yeah, which means everything can become quite slow. And this is where our tool Cineware Proxy comes into play, because with this one you can really quickly switch back and forth between the live effects and rendered proxy files for them. So this means you can, for example, start working with the live effects and while you are working, render final files for your project in the background. And once you've finished rendering, you can exchange your live pipeline by the rendered files and everything is much faster again. At any point in time, you can also go back, say, take my files, replace them with the live effects again, and all changes you did, like all effects you applied to the layers, all whatever else you did, is transferred back to your live pipeline. So this means you can essentially really switch back and forth between rendered files of your um, Cineware or of your Cinema project and the live pipeline. Yeah, this gives you like the best of both worlds at each point in time. You can decide now it's getting too slow, I want rendered files, or now uh, I need to change something, I need to go back, I want to see the live effects again. But now let's take a look at what this is looking like in practice. So here I have a very simple animation that I've created in Cinema 4D Lite. You can use any other version since it's compatible with all of them. And I've saved this project already and imported it here in After Effects. And now I take it and drag it here on a new composition to get this project now rendering live and pretty interactive in After Effects. So far so good. But now if I just, for example, change the renderer to the final renderer, you can see that everything now is rendering quite slow. Yeah, if I go to another frame here, you can see how much time it takes to compute an individual frame. And now if you want to continue working with this in After Effects, it's really pretty annoying to have it everything so slow. So what we want to do is to render this into a file. For this, I just select the layer, click on Create Precomps. For now, I leave everything here at the default and say here, add this file to the render queue. Click on OK. It asks me whether it should create the folder where this file that it's going to render is stored. I click on yes and I have it here in the render queue. Now I render it and now I skip ahead in time until the render is finished. So now our render is finished and if we go back to our composition here, you can see now everything is really quick and interactive. You can scrub through everything and it plays back really nicely. And this means we can now work in a really quick and efficient way. So let's say we want to have some color correction here. I just apply, apply some quick curves, making everything maybe a bit brighter. Uh, maybe like this. And you can start doing arbitrary other modifications here. And everything is really, really quick because uh, we are working with these rendered files. And now if in any point in time you want to go back to your live effects, so let's say we modify our project here and say this Cineware text should not be here at the bottom, but it should rather be here for whatever reason. Yeah, We can save this, file save go back to After Effects and of course now nothing happens because we are not working with the live effects currently, but we are working with our precomp. Now we can just say remove precomps and you can see it starts rendering. Yeah, it updates. We are back to our live pipeline where everything is slower again. But as you noticed, the curves effect here, our color correction has been preserved. Yeah, And now you can Again, go back to your proxies if you like. Yeah, if we again select our layer here and say now again, create precomps. 
This time you notice that this dialog is different because it doesn't say add to render queue but by default has said load from file because it has found your proxy file from the previous rendering. Yeah? So if you don't want to render new proxy files you can just load this previous one and it was automatically filled out so it was automatically found. I click on OK. You can see we are back with our quick uh, a workflow here and with the Cineware at the bottom because this is still the old rendered file. If you want to have a new proxy, yeah, we can remove this one again. Remove. We are back to our slowly rendering live effect. And now if you say we want a new proxy for this stage where the Cineware is moved up, you can say create precomps and instead of loading the already existing one, you say add to render queue, click OK, and now you are back to being able to render this one. But before showing you this, um, let's see where this is much more important and this is in a multi-pass workflow. Yeah, what I want now want to show you is what if you have more than just one Cineware layer, how can you render proxies for all of them at once? And even better, how can you render them in background while you continue working? So for this, let's create another composition by again dragging the footage onto a new uh, composition here. And to keep everything clean, rename this to multi-pass example. Yeah. And in this one, in the effects, we again set our display from uh, software renderer to standard final. And now we want multi-passes. You can configure your passes in Cinema 4D. I'm not going to show you any details about this here, but you just have to enable here Cinema 4D multi-passes, defined multi-passes, and now set add image layers. And this creates your for your animation, not just a single uh, layer, but for the reflection, ambient occlusion, shadows, whatever, individual layers. Yeah? Let's drag this here on the bottom, for example. This is if we solo these layers, you can see here we have uh, everything. Yeah, here we have only the diffuse part of the image. Here we have only the specular highlights. Here we have only the shadows, and at this very la first frame, there's almost no shadow going on. If we are going to the end of the animation, again, it needs some time to render. You can see here these shadows going on and if you solo this shadow layer here you can see this is what we have in our shadow pass and we have here an ambient occlusion pass uh, containing just these ambient occlusion informations and some reflections. So you can add more of these render passes if you want and the nice thing is for all of them that now you can do color correction and all of this individually. But of course all of this slows it down even more so even in this setting it's really really good to have proxies because if I jump here to some frame in the middle you can see how slow it really is to compute all these different passes. Yeah, Now they are done. And um, to create proxies, again, you just select all the layers. Uh, here I like, for example, to have proxies for everything except of this main layer that has no individual render pass but contains the entire image. This one I can make invisible because I don't need it in the multi-pass. Yeah? But here for the individual passes, I select all of them and say create precomps. And now it again says, OK, add to render queue. I choose my naming convention. Yeah. So, I mean, now what you in principle had needed to do is to specify a file name for each of these five uh, files that are going to be rendered. Yeah. Instead of doing this, you just uh, specify one pattern. So it says, at the project path where my Cinema 4D project is located, create a subfolder proxies, then create another subfolder with init with my Cinema 4D project name. So this will be uh, named uh, Cinema 4D proxy animation because this is a um, Cinema 4D file. Yeah? And inside this, a different uh, folder for each of these layers. So the first one is then called Cinema Proxy Animation, blah, 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 reflection. And inside of this, you have a stiff image sequence. Yeah? This will be stored as stiff image sequence. You can change this here uh, if you like, and you can choose here the render settings. Um, but we do all of it. We leave it here all at the defaults and click on 
OK. Now it creates for all these render passes these folders and you say yes I want to have them. And now in principle I could again click on render and wait until they are all finished. Uh, but now I want to show you something even cooler. You can see here I have all these entries in the render queue for each of these individual layers. And now instead of rendering them here in the foreground I go on window background renderer. So this is another tool from a script that you need for this. And click on background renderer and it says yes the project needs to be saved. And now it starts rendering my proxy files in the background. Uh -huh. And while it is rendering in the background I can continue working with them in the foreground. So I can close this background renderer again because I don't need it. I can go here to my multipass example. Here are all the precomps that are not yet finished rendering. So I click again on remove precomps and we are back to our life effects yeah, while the precomps are rendering in the background. And again we can continue working with these life effects doing some color correction. Let's say this time I want to make the ambient occlusion more heavy so I apply some curves here and say I want the ambient occlusion to be really darker but you can see here the difference. Yeah, This is lighter now it got a bit darker and you can start tweaking this even more. You can see, uh, you can say I want here my reflections. You can see with reflections, without reflections. Yeah. Say I don't want to have so many reflections so I lower here the transparency, the opacity of this to something like 50% only. Yeah. And then I can say uh, well with my specular pa uh, there I want to have some on my specular I want to have some curves because it should be much brighter. Yeah, my specular elements should be brighter, maybe like this. And you can see we already did quite some uh, changes here compared to the original. If I take here this lowermost layer that is no individual ren render pass but like the final result of cinema without render passes, yeah, this is what it has been before and this is what we achieved now by color correcting these individual render passes here uh, and we did this while our proxies were rendering in the background. You can see currently everything is still very slow. I jumped here new f to a new frame and I'm still waiting uh, for the result of it to appear. Now it has rendered this new frame and now if I go back to here to a frame again I have to wait quite some time until such an individual frame was rendered but we only have to do this until our background renderers that are currently rendering here have finished. So let's skip ahead in time until this is done. So now background renderer is finished and I go back to After Effects, select all the layers for which I have now finished rendering the proxies in the background and go again to Create Precoms. And now you can see automatically the tool figured out that there exist now these proxy files. You don't have to give here any uh, names manually or whatever. Just click on OK and now we can use here our um, rendered proxies and you can see that all the changes that we did here, like here the curves effect uh, or even more visible uh, here the changes in the specular, yeah, all these changes that we did while the proxies were rendering are now also applied automatically here with the proxies. So this is a great benefit. You can work with a live effect, start working already while the proxies are rendering and as soon as they are rendered or th they have been finished rendering, you can switch to the proxies. Everything is now really fast and interactive and still everything you did while they are rendering is transferred automatically also here. So when you've seen this you might think wow this is a tool that I might use really a lot and if you use it a lot one thing that is a bit annoying is that it takes quite some space in your interface and if you don't like that you can click here on the settings and can enable here the use compact toolbar user interface option and here it says this will only take effect after you restart the tool so let's do this. We close the Cineware proxy and start it again by opening it here from the window menu. And now you can see this time it opened up really small 
and it's just such a convenient, nice uh, toolbar. Yeah, you have this button here to create your proxy precoms, this one to remove them, and here you can get your settings. And you can also, if you dock it anywhere else, let's say we dock it here, yeah, and you make this smaller, you can see it automatically aligns. Now it's vertical, uh, horizontal, and now it's vertical. So it's really convenient to place this next to your timeline. Now, now you can really, uh, really quickly, let's say I select here all my layers, um, control A. So I just want these layers and I want to get rid of the proxies. I just click here and we are back to our slowly rendering life effects. And note that all color correction and everything is preserved. Yeah. And if we want to reuse our proxies, go back to our proxies, we just click here. It automatically finds the pre-rendered proxies. Again, if you had changed something in your Cinema 4D project in the meantime and want to have new proxies, just click here to add them to the render queue. But for now, we want to load the existing ones. And here we are back to our really quickly rendering proxies. This is really nice to have this compact toolbar interface in case you use it a lot and don't have so much space on your desktop. So far, you've seen two different options of how to create your proxy file. So one was to use the standard render queue foreground rendering in After Effects or to use a combination with background renderer to render the proxies in the background while you already start working in foreground with the live effects. A third option, of course, is to export the files directly in Cinema. Yeah. So if you have been used to work in Cinema in the way that you first create your Cinema project, then export there some image sequences or other movie files, and then import them in After Effects, you can do the same also with Cineware Proxy. Yeah? Let's say for this multi-pass example here, I have exported image sequences from Cinema 4D, and I've stored them here in a folder, My Renders, for example, in a subfolder. Yeah, this is um, our Cineware project, Cinema project, and here I have a subfolder, My Renders, and now I have here for each render pass a folder and inside of each of them a corresponding image sequence. Yeah, so this is a standard setup I think you have for rendering, but if you have other naming conventions, it's no problem. Yeah, let's say you don't have here this my renders, but you call this proxy files or whatever, or yeah, this, this all doesn't matter. Pr Cinema, pr uh, Cineware proxy is really flexible in respect to that, and I want to show you what I'm talking about. So I select here now the layers for which I want to set these proxies. Click again in Cineware Proxy on here, creating the proxy precoms. And now it doesn't find these files automatically because they are not uh, named according to the naming convention suggested by Cineware Proxy. Uh, therefore, it thinks no proxies are there. Let's add some new ones to the render queue and render them. But you actually want to load them from files. So you have to explain at least for one of them where is it actually located. Yeah? So I go to Browse and go to the corresponding folder, Cinema 4D, My Renders. We are opening the Diffuse pass currently, so I go to Diffuse and select the first image of the sequence and click on OK. And now Cinema Proxy like thought a lot about this and said, hmm, it looks like your default naming pass pattern is the following. Yeah, Inside of the Cinema 4D project pass, you have a subfolder My Renders then a subfolder for each render pass, and then the individual images are named according to layer name, and then one, two, three, four, five, six numbers. Yeah, zero, 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 zero is the first one. Uh, and it asks you, do you want this to add to your default passes? And if you say yes, look what happened. All the others are filled out automatically. Yeah. So let's choose these proxy files. Now we have our live proxies set yeah and now let's say we want to get rid of these and create them the next time so i create them newly without choosing a single one it has been found again yeah just pick a file name once and similar proxy will remember your naming scheme and now if you say okay in the meantime my proxies changed i want to re-render them and this time i want to render them in after effects you can just pick this new naming scheme and now it will put it into this folder my renders will give a different subfolder for each render pass 
and so on. Yeah, so you can even really easily later overwrite your renders. And if you have a consistent naming scheme that you use in each project again and again, you just have to explain by such an example, yeah, Cineware proxy once how you name your layers, uh, or how you name your proxies, and then it will find them each time and there's no need to manually enter dozens of file names here. If you like, you can also configure these naming patterns here manually. So you can click here, say configure naming pattern. And now you have this dialog that shows you essentially here a lot of placeholders that you can use in these patterns. Yeah. And uh, here you have your pattern. So let's enlarge this here again. Here you get live warnings about your naming schemes. Yeah. Let's say we add a third naming scheme and say, usually I save my uh, proxies inside of my After Effects project folder. Yeah, or here's the entire path. And inside this, I have a subfolder proxies and then Let's call it myfile.mov because I want to work with move files, move QuickTime files, for example. Yeah, And now you get here, for example, a warning that says this pattern is not so useful because I should use either layer name or render pass in the pattern to ensure that each proxy file is mapped to a separate proxy file. Yeah, So, I mean, imagine you have here such a multi-pass situation and you have here one layer for reflection, one for ambient occlusion, one for shadow, etc., etc. You cannot name them all myfile.mov. Yeah? They, they need to have different names. And by in entering such a placeholder, so for example, the layer name, myfile underscore layer name, for example, now it says, okay, Warning, uh, no warnings, all patterns look good. Yeah, if you're not using QuickTime files, but use TIFF sequences as I prefer, you can just enter below this one here, TIFF. And now it gives me again a warning. It says for image sequences, you should have a placeholder that tells me how many numbers do you want at the end. Yeah? So you can add here uh, this one, this is the default. And maybe also let's add here an underscore because I like this before numbers, yeah. And now I can also say I don't want to have five numbers at the end, five digits uh, for me, four are really enough, for example. Yeah. Then we can click on ah, here, monitor space is really limited, click on OK. And now you have this new naming pattern here inside this box and can also render to this format if you like. Finally, I want to show you some advanced options that you find here in the settings of Cineware Proxy. I've already explained this compact user interface thing here. Let me enable it again because I really like working with it. Yeah, this is turning the user interface into this nice toolbar view. This is self-explanatory online updates uh, to have always the most recent version. This here you can deactivate if you don't want that proxy, Cineware proxy learns automatically these naming conventions whenever you enter a file name manually. Yeah? I think usually it makes really sense to keep this on, but if you're annoyed by it, feel free to turn it off. You can configure these patterns that, you ha that are learned here automatically also by clicking on this button. This is the thing I've just shown before, the same dialog yeah, where you can enter here your naming patterns or remove some if you have, for example, learned some automatically and later it turns out hmm, this is not so, not, not the right pattern that I want to have in general or so. Yeah. All these changes can be done here. And this one is also pretty powerful. You can configure the precomp locations. So um, to explain this, let's see what is really going on behind the scenes when you create your precomps. Yeah. Let's say we have here for these five elements, we want for these five layers, we want to have our proxy precomps. I click here to create them and look at our project panel. Currently, there are just these three compositions here and the one we are working with is a multi-pass example. And now we load these files here. And now for each of these five files, a new composition has been created here and all of them have their proxies. You can now control the location of these here. Yeah? This means let's get rid of the proxies and go to the options and say we want our precomps to be inside, uh, let's say, subfolder comp name 
underscore proxies. Proxies. Okay. Okay. And if we now do the same thing again, creating our precoms, clicking OK. Now we have here below multipass example, which is our current comp, a folder multipass example proxies. And inside this, now all these proxy files have been located. Yeah. So if your multipass example comp that you currently are working with is located into some subfolder, so let's remove this again and say new folder, my subfolder, and move the multipass example there. Here it is. And now let's again create these proxies. Okay. Now in the same subfolder, this proxies subfolder has been created. Yeah, very nice. If you don't like this, I get, I need to select this here before actually clicking here. So let's remove it. Okay, now this folder is empty. Yeah, all the proxies are gone. We can also delete the folder now. And now let's say we don't want these proxies to be relative to the folder where my comp is uh, located, but I rather want to have some global folder yeah, within as a main folder of my project, yeah, I go put a slash here at the beginning to say this is now uh, not relative to the comp name, but an absolute pass. Yeah, and there I want to have some uh, proxy subfolder, and in this I want to have another subfolder for comp name, for example. Yeah, this means. At the global level, you have one main folder proxy, and below this one for each comp name, you have subfolders where you put these proxies. Uh, let's check this as in the last example. Cre create here your precomps, and you can see that now, not inside the subfolder, we have uh, another subfolder for the proxies, but we have one global folder proxy, and now one subfolder for multipass example, and inside this one, you find all these uh, proxy precoms located. So you're very flexible in deciding where these proxies that are generated by Cineware Proxy are actually stored inside of your project panel here. Finally, we have some option to configure the render path names. And this is just necessary if you have your file name patterns like, uh, like this one that uses render path uh, token, this render pass placeholder. Yeah? What actually Cineware Proxy does is it looks at your layer name and looks whether it finds any of the normal names of render passes, yeah? like reflection, ambient occlusion. Here in this layer, it finds ambient occlusion in the layer name, so it thinks this is the render pass ambient occlusion. And here it finds the diffuse, so it thinks this is the diffuse layer uh, render pass. If you now have strange render pass names, yeah, let's say you're using some other language than English, or you have some uh, render pass names like uh, my object buffer foreground or so, yeah, you can simply add them here into this list. And then if your layer names contains this text, my object buffer foreground, it will associate the layer with the corresponding render pass. Yeah? I think this is really just for advanced usage. And uh, also, if you have layers like this one, here's a very lowermost one, the bottommost one that has no render pass at all, you can give here a default name. Yeah, the default name is RGB. And what uh, does this mean? Well, that means if you render a proxy for this actual layer here, yeah, say you render one and you say I choose a naming convention that says my renders render pass here, yeah, and this one simply has no render pass, then this will be substituted by RGB. So this will go in a subfolder named RGB. But again, these are already pretty advanced concepts and I think only interesting for uh, power users really. Uh, again, the take home mes message for the entire tool is use it really to switch quickly between the live Cinema 4D pipeline and uh, rendered proxies. And I guess it will really speed up your workflow because yeah, working with these proxy files is just so much faster than having these uh, render processes going on all the time in the background. 
Okay, that's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and yeah, have fun playing around with Cineware Proxy.